she does run out a little bit so I'm gonna see if we can try to straighten this guy or it defeats the purpose crap out of there so it doesn't interfere all right I'm gonna set up a dial indicator and whack it a little bit Bring it in to touch, bring it all the way out to the end because that's going to show the most run out and let's see what we have here. We've got 10. So there's our low. Set that guy at zero, pull back the indicator, and really need to whack it in until we're at five there. Okay, there's five. Okay, same deal. Gotta come in. Need two and a half. I'm gonna grab something else to be on. <clears throat> Sorry for blocking the camera. All right, spin it. Now we're down to two, so I just gotta whack it just a touch more. Well, let's screw that all up. Get a two and a half to go in. Okay, now we're at three. Total run out, so I gotta come in one and a half, just a little whack. There's one. to touch. Come on and put a little tamper on this lead in without tweaking my little nugget. Just a touch to help it out. be our final fit so go ahead and clean this up again and here we go let's put an indicator on that and see what that netted us you bored yet
about 40. Spun in a different direction, about 25. So with the amount of meat we have on this thing, once we get that welded, we'll get this thing back into our collet. Well, wait a minute. Let's see. This has to go on backwards into the collet. So once it's welded, I might have to put my three jaw on to grab this and indicate out here and then turn the rest of that down. Well, we'll see. I'll meet you at the welding table. Alright, so we're back at the welding table. What? Yeah, this this is going to be the welding table in this. At least to tack the parts up. It's just going to use a lathe to get it straight. People talk about, oh, you shouldn't weld in your lathe. Well, if you take the proper precautions, ground to the work or ground to the chuck, then you're good to go. So what I'm going to do here is I got this uh, spun around and fit within a thousandth in this three jaw. Pretty good chuck, but I initially was running two or three out. So now we're at a thousandth. I'm going to face it. I'm going to center drill it. And what I'll do is uh, I'm going to bring in the live center after I put this part to the tool, which wouldn't go into my collet. If I would have welded the thing, it would never come out of my collet. I'd be screwed. So I um, had to put on the three jaw chuck, as I talked about earlier, um, to grab grab the parts. I couldn't do it in the four jaw. It doesn't close far enough. So on goes the three jaw. So again, I'm going to face this guy and then come in with the center drill. stock down and come in. You turn the speed down just a touch. Actually that's half of a touch. And we'll use a little oil here. That's 400 RPM. Here we got a nice center hole. Bring the tail stock back. Pop out my center drill. Pop that guy out. Set him aside for later. There we go. <clears throat> All right, now we're gonna grab uh, this thing out of here, set it aside. Let it cool off for two seconds and now we're back on with this.
Now I'm going to put an indicator on that and try to get that as close as I can to zero just by spinning the work and the chuck. Take off my belt tension. That's really good. That's that's our leany thing there. Look at that. If it if it actually works. Of course it takes a dive when it hits a flat. But that's barely moving there. That's good stuff. Get the indicator out of there. Make sure that work is tight. Wipe this face clean where we're welding. Again, move our carriage down the road here. And here we have this with the alignment uh, deal that we made earlier. So stick that guy in the hole, and I can actually bring. I tighten the tail sock down. Let's line up my center here. And just press it in. So that's where we're at right there. Now, for shits and giggles, go ahead and lock the quill down on the tail stock, and we'll bring the indicator back in and just see what this looks like. It's not a big deal if it's out because we have a lot of material to come off of there. So we're at about four there and we've got a good setup to ensure that this is a pretty straight, I mean it's not as straight as we can get it to that other shaft, but it doesn't matter. This is is dead nuts there, what, what do we say, two tenths. We got three out here, all that's going to come off. We're about 40 thousandths, maybe 50 thousandths bigger between this OD and the OD of the tool. So I'll get the welder set up and we'll uh, see in a bit. All right, so uh, we're ready to weld here. So you can see we got the the ground right here on the chuck jaw. So I'll do a tack, spin a 180, do another tack, um, spin a 90, do a tack and a tack, and then I'll pull the quill out, pull the live center out, and put an indicator on here and spin it just uh, just to see where we're, where we're at. I'm just curious. All right, here we go. We've got our four tacks. I'm 
We'll grab the indicator, see what it's doing. I think we had uh, two or three thousandths run out on this uh, the stainless portion of our nugget here before. So let's see what we're doing now. We'll pull the cool out. See right off the bat, it moved a thousandth. So we're at five there. Not too bad. We'll go ahead and finish weld this up, and then we'll we'll, uh, we'll cut this down to match the. OD of that, which is just under three quarters at 746. Put the ground over here so I can spin the chuck away from the camera and connect my tacks without having to reposition. Let's see where we're at. Let me spin it this time. Three thousands run out, so it actually corrected itself. All right, seen a bit. All right, we're back in here. I freshened up my high-speed steel. This is my stopping point. We're just about an eighth inch onto the the original tool that we modified. I have a stop set here and I've already rotated this, we're good to go. We're not in any danger of effing anything up. So we'll turn the shoulder down to this first. We get a measurement. Actually, we're not even gonna measure, we're just gonna run this straight over to this part here. Gotta put the belt on first. All right, we're turning 800 RPM here. slinging oil. Just 25,000 is depth of cut. Actually, we'll go a little bit more. Let's go with 50. 100 total. Break the chip. Break the chip. Burn the hand, break the chip, lost an edge. Alright, I'm going to go touch this tool up and I can't be that aggressive apparently with my grind. Alright, I'm back. You can hear the grinder spinning down over there. What I did was uh, just cut a radius on that thing. I think that was my issue. I'm trying to use it as a finishing tool for roughing. Here we go again. That out there. We're going to slow it down. It's not cutting it. I mean it's cutting it, but it's not cutting it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Alright. That's uh, 400 RPM. I'm going to turn it down a little bit more. I mean it up actually and we're gonna run 475 we're gonna skip over here to the weld end. 
foot aside so we don't have to measure here. I'm going to cut, start working on this weld. Come in real slow. There it is. And take 10 overall. One more. in and touch up on our factory tool part. Set a zero. Back out. Come back over here. Put it on zero again. And go for it. See what we're looking at. The south bend version of neutral is taking off that belt. So we're, I think we're right, right there. I'm going to go in with my tool just a little bit more, a little closer to the jaws, and do some more. After I Alright, so we're just going to take a couple here and we're going to put it back up in 800 RPM for our finish pass. Looks like we actually cut just a just a touch into the stock tool, but I think that's really good. So maybe one day if I do get a milling machine, since I took the time and effort to do this, I'll be able to have something that's uh, perpendicular to the table if for whatever reason I need to make a long reach and I use this as a boring bar we'll see you know I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna clean that up that's what it, that's what it is it doesn't need to be cleaned up I'll kill this kill this corner real quick and uh, we'll pull it out and Upper hands. That's warm. Alright, so my break on this machine is throwing it in reverse. What do you think about that? Take this hot guy out of here. Back up. Yeah, she's gonna be warm. There we go. 
two inch extended doohickey. A lot of effort for something like this, but I uh, I learned. Hadn't made a video in a while, um, so that's where we're at. I'm happy with it. Decent finish without having to modify it. And uh, you know, if I ever wanted to make this uh, coolant through thing again, I could, I guess, just drill down through all the way. But I doubt I'll do that. There's the big old Miller. It's a 1978 or 1984. I had a Lincoln Precision TIG 175, and that was a great machine, but it didn't have the balls. Uh, this guy wanted to trade straight up, so we did the deal. I happened to have a, a man truck and a man trailer set up that weekend to deliver a bunch of steel for a job I did. And uh, now I have this beast. I put it up on casters, so can roll it around. What I need to do is get uh, a longer ground so I can just have the machine stuff back in the corner over here where it lives, where it's supposed to live. That is, if I want to continue welding on my welding table, I mean lathe. Well, that's it kids. Simplify. Thanks for watching.